Hello everyone and welcome to this week's MySys Tips and Tricks video. We are starting a new series on how to run MySys MRP. And before we actually go ahead and jump into our planning menu and start creating new schedules, the first thing we want to address is are the different options that you can choose from when you want to run MRP. And for that, we have actually developed a sheet that we use with our clients, essential nervous systems, where we ask our clients with our direction to identify the specific setup options that they want to use. The first part here is the MRP method, single step run versus a three step run. So what does that mean? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. So that's the first decision we need to make. And when we look at MRP, if we run it in one step, MRP looks at everything all at one go and schedule things accordingly. So in this case, we are looking at two finished goods. One is the yellow bars and the other is the green bars. So it looks at their scheduled ship dates, MRP, and decides when they should be scheduled, which is the completion date of the MO will be the date that the order needs to ship out. So here we have the yellow order, call it item A, and it needs to ship out on 420. And then here you have the item B, that's the green bar, that's shipping out a little later than item A. However, because they have different cycle times, their starts seem to coincide with each other. And when you do the backward scheduling with the MRP logic in MISIS, you notice that the sub-assemblies or intermediaries manufacturing orders the completion date of those orders are lining up with the start date of the finished good manufacturing orders because that is the backward scheduling. It wants to make sure that the finished good has the required intermediate or sub-assemblies ready on the day when it's going to start running. And then it goes from that point on and uh, creates the purchase orders, trying to make them be all here and available on the day when the sub-assembly is going to start running. So. This might work. However, in many cases, what we notice is we might need to fine tune our schedule so that we might not be able to run these two manufacturing orders on the same day, that we should be able to fine tune and move them according to what would make sense for us, for our capacity, our internal processes, and then run the second step as a unique and individual step for sub-assemblies and then a third step for purchase orders. That way we can now, after running the first step and getting our finished good MOs as they were shown in the first graph here, we can decide to push that one a little bit out or in, depending on where we think it should go, depending on our capacity. And then when we run the second and the third steps, you will notice that all of these uh, yellow bars or orange bars are adjusted according to where the finished good MO was scheduled. So they look at the start date of the finished good MO and make sure that the sub-assembly or intermediary MO is completed on the same day as the start of the finished good MO. So there is that fine tuning for the finished good MO that trickles back all the way to the purchase orders. And this is the advantage of rather one of the advantages of running the three-step MRP. So what are the other advantages of running the three-step MRP? When we go into our planning and go to material requirements planning and select master production schedules and create a new schedule, you notice that the inputs here are the planning horizon and the demand basis. So we go back again to our form here, running this in three steps allows us to have different planning horizons, different shortage bases, different demand signals for each of the individual steps. Rather, when you run it as a single step run, you need to decide what the planning horizon is, one month, two months, or three months, and it's applied across all item types, kind of limiting you Maybe you're creating more manufacturing orders than you need uh, because there are very long lead purchase items. So you, run a, you wanna run your planning horizon to three months, 
but now you're forced to create manufacturing orders for three months. This doesn't have to be so if we run the three-step run. We can determine our finished good planning horizon as one month, similarly for intermediaries or sub-assemblies as one month, but for purchase items, we might choose to run it for three months to make sure that all those long lead items are gonna be available when they're needed for production. Same thing with shortage bases. Maybe we want to run our finished goods to a minimum because we're made to stock. So we wanna have stock there, or even when we're made to order, maybe we still wanna keep certain items at the minimum level, but we might not wanna keep any intermediary in stock. So then we wanna be able to set that to zero. And same thing for purchase items. We might wanna set that to minimum to absorb any variation in our supplier lead times so that uh, the minimum stock, the safety stock can absorb that variation. And so goes for the demand signal, whether we're gonna include shortage bases, sales orders, or sales forecast, any uh, one of those uh, combinations is possible. And with the three-step run, we can mix and match as we want for each item type. So I hope this helps you uh, get set running your MRP on the right foot. And if you have any questions on the details of these options, please feel free to contact us, Central Nervous Systems, and we'll be happy to help you. Hope to see you next week on the second installment of our series on MRP.